Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. So for today, we're doing something different. Should you buy Commander 2019? I'm looking at the decks by function and their financial values and working out is it for you. A um, couple of little ground rules. All the pricing is based on Star City Games in Australia. That's how we like to do it. It's just a good website for us to work on and we often do it one to one, but yeah. Um, I've removed all the basic lands because they are worthless. These prices are based on the Commander 2019 printings on the 11th of August to give you an exact date. Um, with this, the trend that the reprinted cards hold their price, um, they're always lower than the previous printings, hence being a reprint of course, unless there's new artwork involved. For example, Lightning Greaves and Solemn, different artwork, but people love it so they might retain value or have more value. The new cards are often inflated because they're pre-order and they've never been seen before, but they often drop in price unless they find a home, hence pre-order. Um, so also note that all four decks are very similar in the staples they include. All of them have a Sol Ring, Command Tower, Ash Barons, and Myriad Landscape, which is about 10 bucks right there already. So let's go into it. So your first commander is Faceless Menace. This is your morphing deck in black, green, blue. If you were to buy every card in this deck, $106.05. Not the best way to look at it, because you've got a lot of cards that are worth nothing. 15 cents, 20 cents are hard to get. You can't even trade them, they're not worth anything. So you can look at it in two different ways. If you looked at every card over a dollar, You've got $93.05 total there. Okay, that's not too bad. At least one $2 card you can trade. Some people do look for them. If you look at every card over $4, you have $26 total value. That's not too bad either. Right now to buy this commander though, on Star City is about 45 bucks. It's one of the more expensive ones. Um, I've also got here your top 10 cards in terms of pricing. So funny enough, two of your top three are reprints. Seedborn Muse and Tent with the Discovery, six and five bucks respectively. But the new face commander, Kadena, which is the King of Morph, is $6. Um, overall, this deck though, I think has good potential in the long run. Morph is an old mechanic and it has got some support that you could add to this deck pretty easily and make it a bit better. But yep, there's your top 10 cards for the value. If they seem like things you need, there they are. So reminder, Kadena, six bucks. Seaborn Muse, six dollars. And Timothy Discovery, five. They're your top three in this one. Now the Madness deck, this is red-black, um, this is the more expensive commander, this is the most expensive to buy on Star City right now, 45 as well. If you buy every card in this one, $108.85, definitely higher. Um, if you buy every card over a dollar, 94 and a half, not too bad either, but if you buy every card over $4, you've got $43 value right there, that's pretty good, that's actually of the higher ones. So your top 10, I'm noticing a spelling mistake right there, so make fun of me in the comments. Um, the Son of Yogmoth, best card in all of Commander 2019 right now. He's ten dollars, most expensive single. Um, Geth Lord of the Vault, great reprint there, seven dollars. And the new Ange uh, Falconrath, the Madness Enabling Commander, seven dollars as well. And even more down there. And this is also the Commander with the new artwork for Solemn. So a lot of value right there, as you can see. All up, top ten cards, fifty-two dollars. That's pretty good. And just quick roundup, remember, your top three, Son of Yoggmoth, the Geth Lord of the Vault, and Ange Falconrath. Great cards there. This is my personal preference deck in terms of function. I'll go into it later on. All right, so Mystic Intellect. This is the cheaper deck, actually. $35 on Star City, but the value is still here. Um, I have seen some people bash it a little bit in terms of function, but it's not too bad. So if you buy every card in this deck, excluding lands, of course, $106.25. If you buy every card over a dollar, you got $94 worth of value there. And all cards over $4, you got $43 value. It's not too bad either. Um, if you look at your top 10 cards, You've got the Dockside Extortionist. That's the goblin that can generate a lot of tokens. Um, he's really wanted for other things. He's all right in this deck, but a lot of people want him for artifact builds because he puts out a huge board presence. Goes to the reprint at seven dollars is the reprint there, and the sub commander Elsha of the Infinite is actually worth more than the face commander. So yep, there's your top ten at a value of forty nine dollars and fifty cents. So reminder: Dockside Extortionist eight bucks, Ghostly Prison seven, and Elsha six. There your top three for this one. And the last commander in Naya, which is all about populate, red, green, white, is $103.25 all up if you want to buy it. If you were to buy every card over a dollar, you got 90 bucks worth of value there. Every card over four dollars, you've only got $28 worth of value, so it's a bit on the cheaper side. This commander is $40 right now in Star City if you want to buy it. All up though, your top three cards are Grook, a reprint, Lightning Greaves, a reprint, and the face commander, Girid, which I've also got another spelling mistake there. I should have checked my Excel document better, oh well. Um, but this commander, to me, has some pretty cool sub-commanders in it. I can't wait to build the Nest Tender, the Egg Tribe. That'll be good fun. Um, 
Overall though, your top 10 cards are $43.50 right there. So it's not too bad either. So reminder, top three cards are Grook, Lightning Grease, but they've chosen a different artwork for it. That's um, Magic Online or a Judge promo artwork right there. So I know some people will be after that. And the Face Commander, all six bucks each. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, the staples are the same across these four decks. Each one has a Soaring, Command Tower, Ash Barons, and Myriad Landscape, which those together are $10.50 right there. So your staples add a bit of value. Before I start talking about the function of the decks, notice though how tight the spread is between all the decks. Between all those decks, there's no more than five, six dollars of value difference. Um, in previous years, commander decks have had like some decks that definitely stand down and are a lot better than others. This year, they're so close and competitive. Um, I would say that's probably intentional, that's been designed that way. The fact that Wizards have probably gone up, okay, this card's worth about this much, this one's worth about this much. And they've evenly spread it, roughly anyway, best they can. Um, in previous years, you've had like Commander 2013, True Name Nemesis, that one card, 50 bucks since I paid for the deck. Commander 2016, you had things like um, Atraxa and Briar, you had huge standout cards. Um, the Mono Cycle, which is 2014, I think, you had Teferi, what a bomb commander he was. So, like, this year is probably the most competitive or even, I would say. So, in terms of the function, what I did was I, any cards I didn't have in the deck list, I just, <laughs> bit of paper, scribbled it out, chuck it on the sleeve, quick play test, kind of get an idea for the decks. Um, so the first on the Morphing deck, the Faceless ne uh, Nemesis, pretty interesting. I like the advantage of your opponent having to guess, lo losing information or not having any information. That's what you get with Morph. But the disadvantage was I felt a lot slower. I was sinking mana into a lot of the Morph cards if I was trying to really go with the Morph theme. But it was an interesting command nonetheless. Um, Mystic Intellect was one of more of my favorites because of the flashback. I felt like I had more value in whatever I did. But the spell sometimes felt a bit clunky or not the best, but the value was nice. All right, so Primal Genesis. This is the Naya token deck. I already actually run a Naya commander in tokens, so I felt right at home. Simple game plan, easy to pilot, great support and synergy in the deck. It was not bad at all. Could establish a board presence real easy with that populate, and it could clap some cheeks. Um, you definitely took over the board with your creature presence. I feel like it has the best upgrade and potential in the long run because the token support in Naya is real. But I'm a bit biased there because I do play a lot of Naya. And then the Madness deck, my favorite one to play, well, test play by far out of here, and it's also the most expensive. Um, I love the value of Madness, making your spells cost a lot less. I love that it's a bit of reanimator in the deck again, makes me feel like I've got more value or use out of my cards. And playing Madness is just something a little bit different. It's a fun, unique playstyle. All right, so a little roundup here for the breakdown. For new players, yes, you should buy it. It's good, it's a starting point for you. They are great decks, they do function. Amongst themselves, they hold up pretty well. Um, compared to other commanders, they do okay. It wasn't too fair though what I tested. Uh, Lazav, Demir Mastermind clapped a lot of these decks and Marath just dominated everything. Um, Marinora gave them no chance. So they don't do well against trained up decks, but they're good within themselves. Um, if you can find last year's, definitely have a look at them because I've noticed a lot of card shops still have 2018 and even some have 2017 floating around. So it could be an option for you. For current players, if you're after singles, just buy singles for the actual Commander 2019 printed editions. They are pretty cheap. Um, don't blow all your money on one deck when you only need a couple bits and pieces. But if you're looking to build a new Commander, they're not the worst idea either. They give you a good template, a jumping point. Um, they've got plenty of future upgrades. So if you want to try, go ahead. As for value, like money, breaking it down, investing, the horrible words of magic. Um, if you want to break it apart and try and flip it, I wouldn't bother because of the way the value is so evenly spread across the deck, you have so many cards worth a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. It's so hard to unload cards like that aren't worth that much and you're not getting much back for it. So they're probably not the best thing to crack open and flip, not unless something weird happens in the market. For the investors and <laughs> the horrible word of magic, um, wait a while. The future value of this product is determined by the 17 unique cards in every deck because um, all the reprints in the rest of the deck they've quite heavily printed cards, so the value is not really there. Um, but from history, most commander products do pretty well in the long run. Um, I don't think any commander products actually done bad, to be honest, but I'm not a financial advisor. They're just my opinions. So in summary, the decks are good. They run, they function, they do what they want to do. They keep to their theme. The themes are easy to upgrade and there's lots of potential in each commander. There's something different there for current players as well. They're a great starting point for new players. Investing, yeah, in the long run. Um, flipping, probably not, not right now anyway. 
Um, but yes, let me know your thoughts, guys. Are these the kind of commanders you're looking to pick up? Do you want to build them? Let me know what your alterations will be. I do want to do some videos on sub commanders. There's some great themes I've got there. I want to do the egg theme, the dinosaur one. That'd be good fun. Um, but yes, let me know your thoughts, guys, and have a good one. Catch ya. Alrighty, it's that time of the video where we can do a bit of a shameless plug. So thank you for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, please sub and like. It really does help the channel's analytics out a lot. Maybe consider joining me on my other social platforms where you can talk about anything and everything magic related. And special thank you to our patrons. They make the channel what it is. These guys are the building blocks for Mana Down Under. They support the channel in many ways. And if you'd be interested in supporting the channel, links are down below and at the end of the video. Thank you, guys.